Hi friends, welcome to our weekly pastor's update. Reverend Seely wrote our bulletin this week, and so I'm gonna read that to you and share these amazing thoughts that she had this week. This Friday, August 6th, is the anniversary of the day the U.S. dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Witnesses described the moment the bomb was dropped as coming with a dazzling flash of light, even brighter than the sun. Today, the U.S. nuclear arsenal still contains the equivalent of between 120,000 to 130,000 Hiroshima-sized bombs. It's amazing the human effort, scientific, political, financial, creative, and otherwise, um, that we harnessed and continue to harness in the service of violence. The same day also marks the anniversary of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. The anniversary comes with both celebration and somberness as we witness ongoing attempts to undermine voting rights for people of color. Peace activist Father Richard McSorley remarked, there is an overall parallel between militarism and racism, he said. It is the same theology that some people are inferior to others. Some are not as valuable as others. It is the same theology, he said, that says we are not all children of God. August 6th is also the Feast of Transfiguration. It's when Jesus gathered his friends around him on a mountaintop, friends on earth, his disciples, and friends in heaven, the great prophet Elijah and Moses, who went before Jesus, and as his identity, as God's beloved son, shines through, his clothing become dazzling with light, and those in the circle are instructed to listen to him. So Reverend Seely writes, she's so glad that this feast day falls when it does, alongside our commemoration of the terrible binding flash of the Hiroshima bomb. Here is Jesus filled with the love and the light of God, illuminating brightly a different way of being human, a gentle, nonviolent way. She writes, I'm grateful for the communities like this one, Spiritus, that listens to Jesus. God's church should be a laboratory for peace. And that truth really shines here at Spiritus Christi. Here, she sees beloved children of God, strengthened by the memory of prophets who went before, finding ways to channel human ingenuity and energies toward not war, but peace, toward building not bombs, but structures of justice and equity. How beautiful. And finally, August 6th is an important day for one more reason. It is my birthday. And so, Reverend Seely invites you, and so do I, if you uh, see me around this week. I'd love to, for to have you wish me a happy birthday and just reflect on what I've learned through the years. She writes some beautiful things about me. You can read those in the bulletin this week. Friends, this is Grace of God Recovery House Month. This is our month of August to celebrate that ministry, to raise money, to keep that amazing work going. And so I hope that you um, are thinking about planning a home dinner or some kind of gathering or breakfast time or brunch uh, or ice cream social, whatever it is. Um, there are many ways that you can host a gathering and invite your friends and family and neighbors to bring a donation for Grace of God Recovery House. So that's one way to celebrate them uh, and support the ministry, but they have lots of ways um, that they're inviting us to for the month of August. Um, and that is the home dinners, parades, um, they'll have a fundraiser around. We can help uh, support the building of a garden. We can help um, sponsor a window or a door uh, in the Grace of God Recovery House. And in September, I believe it's September 12th, you can sign up to uh, play golf in the golf tournament. So I played for the first time last year, uh, not last year, but the year before the pandemic. And it was my first time and I had a blast. So 
If you're thinking, you know, I've never played before, I'm not sure about this, forget about it, right? Just come on out and have fun on that day. Sign up for the golf tournament, get yourself a foursome together, or sign up and let them put you in a foursome and just join us in having great fun and also being able to support this amazing ministry and work of recovery in our community. And we send our deepest sympathies to Matt and Jody McGarry on the death of their son, Michael. Michael's funeral will be at 11 o'clock on Thursday at Dreyer Giltner Funeral Home. We also send our prayers to Joseph Moore. Joseph Moore lost his son, Joseph Jr. in Liberia this past week. Our condolences also go out to Patricia Sekula and Liz Masco on the death of Patricia's sister, Denise Sekula, who died in June. So we send our hearts to you. We send our love to you and our prayers to you. Well, friends, thank you so much uh, for being with me and listening and hearing our weekly pastor's update. May God's peace be with you in these late summer days. And I send you my love and I send you my heart. Take care.